To determine what's happening with the light bending aspect of the different versions, I needed a laser to show me what was occurring. Version 1 caused the laser to flatten into a long line with the line going in the opposite polarity to that of the lens. Version 2 came about as I attempted to see if I could reverse this stretching laser line, but shortly after I noticed the laser was deviating at particular points on the lens, I immediately understood the havoc this would have on laser targeting and laser acquisition relied on more as military forces modernize. Modern tanks are so well armored that you usually need a direct hit to take it out. If your munition is laser guided and it's deviated by 20 to 40 degrees, then the munition could be off center of target and it could be enough to save the crew and the tank. So what I've done here is I've lined two hundred LPI, line them up with each other so they're back to back and what we'll notice is that as my laser is on an angle, this is where it should be hitting, it's actually hitting to the left of where it should be. So there it's proper and over here it's deviated quite a bit. We'll go and look at this side. It's almost right there. You see there's that. So what I've done here is put 200 LPI together back to back and then created this interference pattern by changing the angle on one of them. And what that ends up doing, if I go straight up here, as you can actually see on the back, that that laser is being redirected left and right and I'm just moving this thing up and down in a straight line When I aim a standard store-bought laser pointer at a single-sided lenticular lens in the same polarity and simply turn the lens, I can form a circle or two back-to-back -back arcs. The laser is both refracting through the lens and reflecting off the lens almost in equal parts. Remember this is a single-sided lens, there is no lens on the smooth backside. The Canadian military scientists seem perplexed by this weird laser cone. So I knew that from their reaction, it wasn't something they had witnessed before. Apart from the cool shapes, was there any practical application to laser lines, arcs, and cones? Well, improved security systems where we could create a laser wall without spinning a mirror to do so. We could also form a laser cone around items to protect them from theft. Upon further examination, and I say further meaning distance, I noticed that these were not lines, but dots. And the bigger the circle of the cone, the greater number of dots. And the larger the lens, even more dots made up the line, arc, or circle. I then noticed an interference pattern within a tight arc I had made, which made me think that quantum mechanics was at play. If you're familiar with the double slit experiment in quantum physics, if we aim a coherent light source at two slits, we expect to see two lines on a wall behind the material with the two slits. But we get multiple lines forming, with the strongest in the middle and the weakest at the sides. This is because light is behaving like a wave pattern. Similar to dropping two rocks in the water, the ripples or waves will interact with one another. 
you get constructive interference, which is where the waves pile up, and you get deconstructive interference, which is where we see the gaps in between. Light has been determined by the double slit experiment to be both a particle and a wave. What does this mean about the formation of our lines or cones from a laser hitting a lenticular lens? I believe we're seeing constructive interference taking place not just at the top and bottom of the wave, but the lens is causing the constructive interference to happen along the wave sides as well as deconstructive interference in between, causing the laser to split into hundreds of smaller laser lines. As all of the laser lines are being split from the parent laser, are all of these laser lines connected by quantum entanglement with each other? I called up my patent attorney who has his Masters of Science in Physics to discuss this with him, and upon asking if quantum physics might be the reason we're seeing all of these weird properties of lenticular lenses, specifically with laser splitting, he paused and then answered, I think it's the only explanation. Remember, he said, quantum mechanics is going on all around us all the time. We just don't perceive it like we do with normal physics. In the last video, I demonstrated the cone effect and showed that the line that made up the cone was made up of hundreds of laser dots, which means the laser is splitting into about a thousand smaller lasers to make this cone. In this video, I'll show how I can compound this effect to split a laser into over one million separate lasers and what the potential applications are. A diffraction grating is an optical component with periodic structures that splits and diffracts light into several beams traveling in different directions. I'm using both single axis, which splits a laser in only one axis, and double axis grating, which splits a laser both horizontally and vertically. When I combine the diffraction grating with the lenticular lens, every dot from the grating now becomes a line, and each line is made up of about a thousand small laser dots. If the diffraction grating is placed on an angle, those lines become much more numerous. What we're going to look at here is the laser going through the three pieces of diffraction grating and creating multiple dots. And what happens, we can actually create thousands of lines and each one of those is made up of individual dots if we were to go back far enough. So we can essentially turn a LiDAR system uh, into something that is many, many times more powerful than just what we thought we could do with a single line. Now we have thousands that can come out and all of them be curved as well. Using three pieces of diffraction grating now, this is a thousand lines per millimeter. Then I've got two pieces, which is single axis, two pieces of double axis, which are both 13,500 lines per inch and a very coarse piece of lenticular lens. just by me changing that angle or they can duplicate and uh, produce even more lines and each one of those is made up of a thousand dots if we were to go back farther and uh, just walk across the room here. The image you're seeing on the lower right of the projection screen is actually a shadow of the phone slash camera on top of the tripod, as all the laser lines are being stopped by the phone and tripod before hitting the screen. A sniper may no longer need to search through a scope to look for the enemy. 
With millions of lasers scanning the battlefield, he could just look at his tablet to see every person there and zoom in on the tablet to gain detail on a target. The level of detail should allow for facial recognition at many hundreds of yards. A drone or aircraft over the battlefield might be able to detect ultra-high resolution on both sides and warn Allied soldiers of impending threats. A recent study in the U.S. found that they could get a LiDAR reflection off a stealth aircraft, but they had to know where the aircraft was in order to pick it up, as LiDAR loses resolution with distance, so at 10 miles away it would be difficult to find it with one sweeping LiDAR. Now multiply that laser by a thousand, a hundred thousand, or a million or more lasers, and you're going to see anything that's moving through the air and know exactly what you're seeing, even a hypersonic missile. In the future, with more powerful lasers, any target detected may be instantly neutralized. It's definitely not heating it up. But if I turn the laser slightly, 